Good morning. Magandang umaga. We are with the 1999 Toyota Tamarau FX Revo. Uh, solid, solid car we find in the Philippines. And today I'm going to take you through some of the routine maintenance because I find these videos very helpful uh, when working on cars. So we'll take it slowly and uh, we'll go through the routine maintenance that you would typically expect to do on uh, on your car yourself. Okay, follow me. Okay, let's have a look under the uh, bonnet here, or the hood, as you might uh, say. Um, this is a 1.8 petrol or gasoline engine, I should say. Uh, cam chain, which is great, so nothing to replace there. But let's just have a look under the under the bonnet here and just identify some of the key areas for maintenance. So of course, we've got our engine here. This is where we'll be filling our engine oil. The filter is very close by here, very conveniently placed, so we can access it here from the top. Got our distributor here, and under here, of course, these leads, we've got our spark plugs, which we'll replace shortly. Power steering fluid here, manufacturer's guidelines is that you just use standard ATF, so Dextron 2 or 3 is fine. Uh, obviously we can see our big battery here, and under here uh, this big cylinder contains our air filter. Okay, coming towards the front now, we've got the coolant in the radiator with the uh, overflow pipe here, and your windscreen washer fluid bottle now. I'm going to have to replace the pipe work on this uh, as it is damaged um, and I need to replace the little jets as well uh, that feed uh, the, the, the fluid to the windscreen but we can do that separately. Okay so that's the overview there. Let's get started. Okay so we're going to do the air filter now. The air filter is housed in here. Just come a little closer. Reeve. Reeve is assisting me today, my nephew. So we're just going to take these clips off here one two on that side and three fairly straightforward and this lifts up now i've actually already removed the air filter it just reveals this cavity underneath and we've got our new air filter which i'll bring across to you here that's fine you can come out and there's a brand new air filter and this simply goes in oops let's see if i can fit it in there Snug down like that, and we can replace the cap on there. It's a nice snug fit, and then the reverse is simply clip, clip, and clip, and that's our air filter. Okay, okay, spark plugs next. Another fairly clean job. Spark plugs are found here alongside the engine block, and I've taken one of the leads off. We're just going to demonstrate with one spark plug to begin with, so they're on they lay it like that. And we're just going to pull that off, take our spark plug wrench and just place that over the top gently, let it grab. I'm just going to loosen that off. Now I've already loosened this one off actually. So let's just bring that spark plug out. These spark plug wrenches have a little rubber uh, insert which just helps grip the spark plug so there we go and there's the old spark plug there put that to one side and then we'll get the new spark plug in i've got ngk bpr 5ey just obviously check the type that you need for your engine we've checked the gap at 1.1 millimeter as per the manufacturer's guidelines we'll just place this in very gently try and keep nice and central key thing is to be very gentle on the first th few threads because you don't want to cross the threads and I can feel that's going in very easily there. Once that's finger tight we will just use the wrench just to tighten that off a little bit more. Not too tight but you just want it to sit solidly in the engine block. I'll do them one at a time just so we don't get uh, IHT leads mixed up, but they're fairly uh, straightforward to, to check anyway. Okay, so that's our spark plug done. We'll do the rest. Okay, so we're going to change the coolant now. So this is our radiator. And uh, of course, don't open this when this is hot. But this is where we'll be putting the coolant in. 
and um, what we'll do, we'll do a flush as well at the same time, get some of those grubby bits out. So we open this up by just twisting anti-clockwise and we'll go underneath and we'll have a look at the drain pipe, okay? Okay, so I'm under the car now. This is the bottom um, passenger side of the radiator and we've got this drain plug here, which I'm going to loosen off and we're going to drain all the coolant out shortly. Okay. What I'm gonna do is use a hose to fill this right up again. We'll put the plug back in underneath, fill it right up with water. You can also put flushing agents in. I, the, the coolant that came out just now was very clear. So I'm just going to fill up with water. We'll let that flush out and then we'll put our final mix. Okay, so we're just filling up with some tap water for now. Uh, we're gonna fill this up to the top and then we're going to uh, rinse it all out and then we'll put our final mixture in. So we're just putting in some uh, Toyota coolant here. Uh, obviously get rid of the effluent safely, the wash that we've got rid of. And we're gonna do a 50-50 mixture roughly. So six liters capacity, we'll put about three liters of this long life coolant in and three liters of distilled water. So that's fantastic. Okay, so power steering fluid now, often a neglected fluid. This is our power steering uh, housing here. Um, and uh, quite simply, we just uh, unscrew at the top layer. And the best way really with this, I think the easiest way is just to suck it out and put some fresh ATF. But what I'll probably do is, is run um, a flush by using some of this ATF through the system, suck that out um, and then refill up to the, uh, uh, the internal edge there. Okay, let's get that started. Okay, so I've just got this uh, 50 mil syringe and we're just going to withdraw the fluid out of its housing like so. I'm not entirely sure how much fluid there is in here, but we'll just withdraw as much until it's dry and then we'll fill it with some ATF. Okay, we're gonna fill it with some uh, ATF here, ATF called power steering fluid, very similar. Um, and we, we siphoned off about 250 mils there, so just gonna be very careful as we put this in. Just now have a quick look under here to see how we're doing. Pull it nice and slowly. Okay, so that's filled with our ATF, but of course we're going to flush this. So I'm going to start the car, just move the steering left and right, just so it circulates, and then we'll suck it all out and then fill it up again. So I've just run the car, we've moved the wheel to one extreme and then the other to flush round that uh, new ATF. I've then siphoned off more um, and it was still a little dirty but uh, somewhat cleaner. And now we're going to fill uh, with our ATF uh, for the final fill. Again, it was about 250 mils approximately, but we'll just, we'll do it by sight uh, because we just want it up to the top of the internal ring that we can see. And I think we are almost there. I'll run the engine, turn the wheel again to check that we circulate all the oil and we'll just top up after that. Okay. So now the most important part of maintenance, I would say, is changing the engine oil and the filter. If you're only gonna do one thing uh, in terms of maintenance, it's changing the engine oil. So we'll be filling this up in here. We'll be changing the filter here, which is a screw on. Um, and uh, in order to drain it, we're gonna have to go underneath and find the sump plug. Okay, so we're under the car now. And this is our sump here. And we can see there is a a bolt under here. Now I don't actually know how big this is. I'm gonna tell you shortly as I find out the size. Okay, I've quickly discovered that it's a 14 millimeter wrench that's required. So we're going to uh, loosen that off and uh, drain the oil. That's better. Okay, now we're gonna position the oil pan right underneath. And this is the key part is to go nice and slowly and to avoid making a huge mess rapidly pull 
your hand and ideally the bolt away with you like that so there we go not too bad actually so we'll let that drip away thank you very much okay so we've got the old oil filter down here here's our replacement oil filter i've put a little rim of oil just around the uh, the rubber sealing ring there and uh here's one i loosened earlier so just oh so anyway so i loosened it earlier it's pretty tight still let me see if i can get this off Clockwise direction there. Let's see if we can catch the little drips at the back. Can remove the filter like so. And then we simply replace with a new one by screwing that on top and tight is fine and just another extra half or three quarters turn if you can manage it There we go and finally we're just going to fill with engine oil in here and check the level so until uh, just before we uh, uh, fill with uh, with engine oil let's obviously put the sump plug back in so we're we're down to uh, we're down to drips now just uh, I've wiped the uh, area here and we're just going to uh, put our sump plug back in Finger tight initially, and then locate our wrench onto it. Everything's nice and tight on there. Good. Okay, and now it's time to fill with engine oil. So just filling with engine oil here, I'm using 20 watt uh, 50 oil. I'm going to put three litres in initially and then we'll be followed. Uh, we're going to be guided by the, the, the dipstick really. Um, and we'll run the engine, just make sure it circulates uh, before checking again, getting the exact level. Okay. Right, we can do the differential now. I think we've got a visitor. Excuse me, Kitty. We need to do some work. Right, so I'm going to go under there, spray some WD-40. It's going to be quite stiff here, so I'm just going to spray a bit of WD-40 on here. We've got the filling port here on the differential, and we've got the drainage port there. And the key thing, of course, is to make sure you can actually open the filling port first. Because if you've opened the drainage and uh, you can't fill it because you can't get it open, then you're a bit screwed. So uh, best check you can uh, do this first. So I'm going to use my wrench 24 millimeter wrench and might need a breaker bar on this but let's just have a look and see what we can do and already I've discovered that uh, the nuts already chewed so I can't take this off so I'm gonna leave this to a garage to do next time. Here you go. Right friends, we're under the car. We've jacked it up safely. Gearbox, uh, difficult to get to, um, but 24 millimeter wrench. This is your drainage uh, port and this is your filling port. Really awkward position really to be filling. Um, but uh, make sure again that you can undo the filling port before you undo the uh, drainage port and I've just managed to loosen them off with a bit of uh, a bit of elbow grease um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to drain the oil and then I've created a little contraption with some hose and 
a funnel to see if we can fill it from height up from somewhere in the engine bay. So watch this space. So my assistant and I have uh, now drained the gearbox oil um, and uh, getting to the filler is actually very difficult um, under the car I find. So what we've done, we've created this little contraption of a funnel with a hose attached to it. And I'll show you, I'll take you down underneath. And I'll show you where we've, we're feeding it into. And if you can, bear with me, you can just appreciate here that we're feeding it into the filler port there. And so we're gonna slowly start filling. And of course we stop filling um, just as we start to see uh, the oil trickle out of the uh, filling port. So we'll get going with that now. Okay, so we're filling now. This is the hose that's slowly filling the filling port. Um, and uh, this, is the, uh, uh, this is the drainage uh, port that we've closed over again. And really you're just filling it slowly and waiting until you see oil dripping out and then you know you're at your full level. Uh, give it a wipe afterwards and then we'll pop the, uh, the bolt back in and then we're done. Okay, and now we can just see this little trickle of oil coming out from under here. I've given that a wipe and it started to trickle again, so we know this is full. So now it's time to put the nut in and then we're done. That's the gearbox oil done.